Well, howdy and welcome to my swimming pool here in the back of my home at Indian Lake Estates, Florida. I'm here with the Flex Shooter Pro, an Enduro GIT304L, and my Nikon 600 with the D850 and a teleconverter. I'm going to give you some of the basics about this amazing new head that has quickly gotten me to uh, switch from my mongoose using that for about 15 years and then Wimbley 10 years before that so the stuff gets lighter and better. One of the things I love about the Flex Shooter Pro is that there's no hassles with getting it on and off the tripod. If you tighten the two knobs, the silver ball knob and the silver bullet, silver ball, the silver ball lever and the silver bullet knob, you simply grasp the housing and turn and push down to release it, get it off the tripod for travel, and then do the opposite for uh, once you get to your location. Give you a little bit of an idea here as to the basics of this setup. Not sure how much you're going to see. I keep the silver bullet knob on my left. The plate clamp on my right, lens direction is pointing at the camera here. And then at the very top, you might be able to see the bubble on the silver ball. So the first step, whenever you set up this your tripod, whether you have a flex shooter or not on it, should be to pull the legs out and make sure that the tabs are all firmly against the stop so you have more stability. And it's actually easiest with the Flex Shooter Pro to first level the legs of the tripod. So the, the ball is a little bit off here. The, 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 the bubble is slightly off in the scribe circle. Just one or two quick changes with leg length will make that perfect. And by taking a moment to leveling the tripod platform, you make your job of leveling the large silver ball easier, and you won't have to do it as much. We'll talk about that a little ways on into the video. By the way, this is a totally homemade fly by the seat of your pants. Who knows if it's even going to turn out video. So it's generally easiest especially if you'd be standing in one spot for a while, to level, level the silver, the large silver ball first. So to do that, you give that a turn or two on the silver bullet knob, loosen the silver ball clamp, and then with my reading glasses, I'm going to center the ball with my head pretty much right on top, center the ball, center the bubble, right in the scribe circle and then being careful not to jerk anything when I do when I tighten it just firmly tighten the silver ball level lever and now I have the ball the, the bubble centered in the scribe circle on the silver ball and also coincidentally on the tripod so that's the easiest way to do things uh, again, I like to have the bubble in the notch at the back of the tripod where it's a little bit easier to see. The silver bullet knob on my left and the clamp knob on my right with the black lever for the silver ball uh, easily accessible to my left hand. So we're going to mount the lens on here. Lord, when am I going to get a Sony 400-2.8? And as I wrote in the uh, instructional bit on the blog, it's super important, with your big lenses especially, to make sure you loosen the clamp all the way, the amazing two-way uh, two Arca Swiss compatible clamp, and to take the utmost of care putting the plate, and this is a, 
an NP61A fourth generation design plate, which will soon be replaced by a Bigfoot. But to be absolutely sure that the lens foot or plate is in the clamp and that you confirm that visually before you let go. So we are good. Now I just take a moment to level the camera body and the tripod collar with the in the viewfinder level on the D850 and now I am good to go and if I have the bubble in the silver ball centered I can point the lens anywhere and it's going to be completely level I can point it up or down and you can already get an idea of the amazing uh, effect of the counterbalance here notice no ball head flop your lens can't fall over you're never going to squash your fingers and that's with just well when I'm walking I'll tighten this up nicely then I'll undo it three steps for flight photography maybe four and no matter how loose you make it there there's still a beautiful amount of tension uh, on the head that makes flight photography a snap you saw the uh, blog post the other day with a bunch of flight pictures and I have zillions more with this setup now if you've put the lens onto the Flex Shooter Pro and you're working on uneven ground or you're in your car which I've done a whole bunch with this then you may need to loosen the silver ball lever, lever, lever and peeking through you can if you have your reading glasses on you can let's say we had this askew we can still do a pretty good job of centering the bubble in the scribe circle some of you may prefer to have the bubble off to the right side and if I were going to be working in the field where I'd have to change that often, that's exactly what I would do. Another great trick is that I discovered at the Soto last week was that you're working in sand, soft sand, sand mixed with water. When you put the lens down, it's going to go down at a slightly different angle each time. But there's a great trick that's a time saver that I'll share with you here. The first time you get in the soft sand and you firm up the tripod, you want to take a moment to center the bubble on the tripod platform into the scribe circle and then to level the silver ball. Now you pick up the lens and you walk to a new spot. You put the lens down, the chances of this, the bubble on this in the scribe circle being centered on the tripod are slim but we know that we've coordinated this centered bubble with this centered bubble so rather than having to go through the whole rigmarole of centering the bubble on the silver ball you can actually lean on your tripod push it further into the sand watch the bubble and with a little bit of practice heck I've been doing that for 25 years with a little bit of practice. Sometimes if you're on a hill, you may need to work the leg length to get the bubble on the tripod. But understand that once you have the bubble on the tripod centered in the scribe circle and the bubble on the silver ball, then once you get the tripod level, you don't have to mess with the flex shooter and you give your couple of couple of turns on that and it doesn't matter everything's level and of course more amazingly I started to mention it before wherever you point your lens that's where it's going to stay now, I did leave out one important part in the beginning and that is when I put the lens on when I put the lens on the first thing that you want to do is loosen 
the silver bullet knob and we can see that this is front heavy it won't even go back so I tighten that and I know that with my 600 and my V850 that if I have the front of this fourth generation design NP61A plate just at the front of the clamps and I loosen it that I'll pretty much be perfectly balanced you see not front heavy the problem right now is that when I take the teleconverter off then I'm unable to balance the rig unless I pull the lens back so that it's supported only by the rear parts of the two-way clamp so not the greatest situation in the world but that's what I've been doing even walking across the water with the jaws only two of the, the the two rear jaws supporting the lens so far so good not advisable so Karai Kasaba in Hungary who's the brains behind all of this we're currently working feverishly to get the proper long plates for Nikon uh, somebody wrote me an email I think my friend Bill Hill is it true Artie that you can only point the lens down a certain amount and up a certain amount and the answer is absolutely yes in a way I chuckle because whenever I'm in the field and I see people shooting birds in flight at Bosque 45 40 degrees up I just laugh knowing they'll never keep one or never make a good image so in general for flight you want to be about here and I'm figuring this is about 23 degrees up or down if you needed to photograph a beautiful nest that's way up in the tree simple matter of loosening the ball and pointing it up you won't get the complete level but you'll certainly have something workable and you can even adjust the tension for your needs let's level this back up again and again I'm gonna actually take the time now to move the bubble to the right so I loosen this it's got a thingamajig where you can actually make it looser by pulling out on the lever and then I'm going to turn this I'm going to try oh I need to tighten this sorry do that I'm going to put the bubble on the right side Then I'm going to just half tighten it, put the lens straight ahead, and now I can get a look down at the bubble and with the silver bullet knobs, just a little tension on it, I can level that perfectly, tighten it. Now if I want to make it real tight, which I do, I pull that out, the lever out, and tighten it down to the housing. And now I can point the lens anywhere up or down and have it perfectly level a couple of things finishing up I'm going to take the lens off oh one last thing when I'm in the field if I'm wearing a fanny pack or if I remember I keep a little square of that non-slip shelf liner maybe a 4 by 4 inch square because I really like to crank down on the clamp and in case I make it too tight I'm good to go lens safely off lens safely on the ground not in the pool now I'll come up again I have no idea how this is going to look so now you can see that I have moved the bubble to the right side clamp on the right side silver bullet knob on the left side easily accessible one of the things that it takes time to get used to is that once you've leveled the silver ball you never need to touch the large silver ball level that that black lever one of these years I'll learn the difference between the word level and lever but hopefully you get the point point. and one of the neat things you notice with the long plate on a long lens 
lens direction, the lens is this way. If you're mounting a short lens on a camera body with, say, a Wimberley P5 plate, that's going to go crosswise to the big plates of the telephoto lenses. And then you are really in great shape for scenics. Another thing I forgot to mention, once you've leveled this, and again here, now all you need to do is level the leg. Now I know this is level. I have my short lens on the tripod. The beauty of this, from, of the uh, Flex Shooter Pro for macro or for scenic photography is once you frame your shot and you tighten this up, there is zero bald head creep. I've never seen any bald head. The Mongoose was pretty good or the Wimberley. But with all of those, when you tightened everything up, your image shifted. Not with the Flex Shooter Pro. How they did this technology, I have no clue. Uh, see me wearing my Gulfport t-shirt. We had a great time in Fort DeSoto twice in a couple of weeks. And DeSoto's really becoming the Sanibel, the new Sanibel. Uh, great photo opportunities and now the stuff with the sandbar if you know the tides and you know how to shoot it just countless opportunities opened up so I invite you to join me I'm going to do a DeSoto Fall IPT I'm going to go back to Bosque for the first time and of course we have ever-present San Diego and if you see this I'm offering 2,000 bucks off of the UK trip for Puffins and an amazing 4,000 off for uh, what will almost surely be my last Galapagos photo cruise. So see you on the blog. If you're getting some new gear, please remember to use our affiliate links, either for B&H or Bedford. Have a great day. Have fun. Make some good pictures. And we'll see you out there.